Okay, so we we stopped at uh, verse eleven, right? Chapter one. Um, sorry, chapter two. And so, so Paul is uh, inviting uh, and encouraging the Corinthian church to forgive this person. Uh, and um, he says, forgive, um, reaffirm your love, comfort, you know, all that. And um, and then this is what he says, you know, lest Satan should say take advantage of your uh, of uh, of us. So so the very important thing is that if there is um, you know see now when there was um, uh, when there was a decision taken in order to correct bring in correction in a person's life, now that was the right decision. Right? That was the correct thing. Now, uh, when we see the repentance and here again, the correct uh, uh, decision is um, to to bring that person back into fellowship, which is again the right thing to do. Okay. So now, if um, if we do not do the right thing, so Paul is saying that we don't want Satan to take advantage of us. Okay. Now, if we are not doing the right thing. Right. Uh, we know that this is, we've seen the repentance, we've seen the person's uh, change of heart. Now the right thing to do is to, is not continue in unforgiveness or in not continue in that same manner, but to actually make a change and uh, uh, forgive that person, comfort the person, reaffirm the love for that person. Now that's the right thing to do. Now when that is not done, they will take advantage of our lives. Take advantage meaning we'll do everything to, uh, you know, deceive us, to bring in maybe unforgiveness, maybe bring in offense and and all that. Right. So he's saying, you know, we are not um, unaware of Satan's devices. We know that he's very capable of doing that. So, the, so you know, the reality of um, of spiritual warfare, the reality of uh, you know, uh, deception and sin and so on that uh, that Satan wants to bring in. We know that Satan is uh, well, Satan is defeated and is uh, you know defeated by the Lord on the cross and so on. But Satan still chooses to or is uh, you know is is on the earth and uh, and continues to deceive. If we let him, we have authority, and we should not be ignorant. Uh, about his works and the way he works. So once we have the knowledge, okay, this is something that Satan will do. You know, Satan will tempt. Satan will, um, you know, if I continue like this, then Satan will. Uh, is it's possible that I, you know, I get uh, cheated, I get deceived uh, by Satan. So while we know that, when we know that, when we have that information, then we should not allow Satan to take advantage of us. As believers, right? Very clear, very simple. So we we now in when in scripture we read and we say, okay, if we do this, we open the door for Satan. Right? Um, in Ephesians, we see that uh, Paul writing that uh, um, you, you know, uh, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give a foothold for the for the devil. Okay. So which means what? Which means is that when I, if I'm continuing in unforgiveness and anger and sin, uh, anger and wrath, I am actually giving a open door for the for the devil, open door for Satan to come in, come into my life, come into uh, you know a family, and come into the church. So I should not give uh, room for that. Okay. So the reality of that, Paul is presenting. You know this this is the reality. If we are continuing in this. Uh, well, Satan will take advantage. Okay, so for us as believers, um, we need to know that we need to be informed about this. Yes, we are informed about this, but how? What do we do with that information? Right? Do we still allow Satan to take advantage because of our decisions, because of our choices, right? Uh, because of our, you know, not doing certain things which God has clearly told us to do, or um, which we, when we hesitate to do certain things, which God has called us to do, we we are, you know, giving Satan the upper hand, right? So, 
scripture is very clear do not give uh, satan the advantage right okay so that's something that we learn um let's uh, let's continue to read from verse 12 onwards okay verse 12 furthermore when i came to troas to preach christ's gospel and the door was open open to me by the lord i had no rest in my spirit because i did not find titus my brother but taking my leave of them i departed for macedonia now thanks be to god who always leads us in triumph in christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place for we are to god the fragrance of christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing to the one we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other the aroma of life leading to life and who is sufficient for these things for we are not as so many peddling the word of god but as of sincerity but as from god we speak in the sight of god in christ okay um so uh, it talks about an incidence where uh, we verse 12 he says where he came to troas and he was uh, preaching the gospel and uh, and there was a door open to him by the lord but uh, and also talks about you know uh, how he was uh, he was uh, waiting to see titus uh, and um, he couldn't uh, meet him uh and uh, so after he finished he he took leave and then he i mean took leave of them he moved from there to um macedonia so he's saying he was concerned about titus he could not see him and uh, and he says you know i had no rest in my spirit right so he was troubled uh, in, in a man he was troubled in his spirit because he could not find titus um now later we see that titus joins and then you know we see that in verse um um yeah chapter 7 we read about it you know uh, maybe we can just quickly turn the chapter 7 um we read about uh, how paul says uh, uh, nevertheless god verse 6 chapter 7 and verse 6 nevertheless god who comforted the downcast comforted us by the coming of titus um and not only by his coming but also by the consolation with which he was comforted you which uh, and so on so you know he was again uh, titus rejoin they were reunited and and so on so uh, so that you know he was comforted greatly comforted in that okay so um yeah let me just project the notes for those of you who didn't download it um So verse twelve says, uh, you know, I this is what happened. Verses twelve and thirteen, and uh, you see, you know, a great door was opened to me by the Lord. So a great opportunity, opportunity to minister uh, uh, again, opportunity to minister. Uh, this specifically, he says, it was opened to him by the Lord. Okay, so um, from the uh, this verse from fourteen onwards. and uh, till chapter 7 and verse 4 okay so we see that uh, paul uh, beginning to write about the nature of his ministry so here he um, he he writes about certain uh, the way in which they minister he also writes about uh, um uh, you know um uh, this apostleship he defends his apostleship the kind of difficulties uh, um, and the and the way in which uh, uh, you know the, the way in which he lived the kind of lifestyle they had and all that so um, so that is something that is writing so from this we we see that you know uh, all the reason for paul to write this is uh, maybe people still felt you know that uh, they they just felt that paul's ministry and his apostleship because he you know he is is writing to them about the genuine or of the authentic way in which a minister should should actually live and minister right so he contrasts that with some of the false apostles or people who you know who who are uh, uh the way in which we in, in which they 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 live and minister and so on so he talks about that also in the uh, you know the later chapters 
right? Okay, so let's um, look at verse um, uh, verse fourteen, right? So it says, "Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge in every place." Okay, so it says, uh, "Thanks be to God, thanks be to the Lord Jesus, um, uh, who what does He do? You know, He leads us in triumph." Okay, so he leads us victoriously in Christ Jesus. I'm a believer. I'm in Christ. I am one spirit with Him, and the Lord, uh, the Lord God, leads me in triumph. Leads us as believers in triumph. In every situation, you know, we can expect to be led out. You know, what seems to be like utter failure, what seems to be like utter defeat, we can expect God to work. And you know, as long as we are submitted to Him, as long as we are, um, you know, following His leading, we can, we can, um, we can expect to be led by the Lord into triumph. Okay, so which means that. When he leads, one has to follow. Okay, uh, and we—that's for sure, right? Uh, even in Psalm 23, we see, you know, he leads me. It means that when one is leading, uh, the ones who are being led have to follow. Only then the leading will make sense. Okay, if I'm not following, then I cannot go into the areas. Or go into the positions which God has for me, right? possessions He has for me. So, so this leading aspect is only effective as long as we are following. Okay. So here it says that God leads us in triumph. So that is God's will. That is God's desire. Okay. That's something that we understand. God wants to lead us. Into triumph or in triumph, victoriously in triumph in Christ. So that's God's will, right? So our will needs to be united or be one with God's will, and say, okay, yes, Lord, you 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 cause me to you know, walk in triumph, right? You lead me in triumph in Christ, right? So we don't have to stay defeated. Right, we don't have to stay uh, in a place of failure. He leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus, which means if He's leading, it means desire. Right. So, what is our will and desire? Do you want to stay in victory, uh, stay in defeat, stay in failure, or do we want to be led by Him? So, to be led by Him, we need to follow Him as He leads us in triumph. Okay. Okay, so here Paul is actually using a, a, a picture which the Roman army, in, in many places he uses that, right? In Ephesians, uh, you know, six also we see that he talks about the, you know, the other the the armor, um, the spiritual. Uh, I mean, the armor which uh, a person wears, um, and we see that these are p uh, pieces of armor that a Roman soldier would uh, would wear. Right, um, the shield, the the belt, and the the sword, and and everything. So, so here also he uses that um, that anal or that picture of a of a victorious um, army returning. Okay, when they when they the Roman army would conquer uh, some land and they would uh, and they would march through the streets, okay, to the capital. So this is what would happen that they would. Then, you know the, all these state officials, the and the, uh, all this army would go, and then um, they they would also carry you know whatever the uh, whatever the spoils of that place was, and then they would also be a sacrifice of a of a bull of a white bull, uh, which would be made, and the the people who were captured or the the kings or the princes uh the generals of armies you know they'll be they'll be taken in chains so uh, they'll be put in prison or executed or you know so then um then there'll be some musicians who are singing the praise of the emperor and, and then there'll be some priests coming there uh bringing incense so so he's saying you know that 
um, picture is is actually painting that picture about God leading us in triumph in Christ. So he's saying, this is what this is what would happen. So that the very um, so the historian, you know, Barclay, he makes mention of that. It's there in the notes. You can you know, it's uh, what I'm projecting there. You can take time to read through it. But the fact is that uh, that uh, incense, that fragrance, was uh, was would remind the people about the victory. Okay, because it was a victory position, a possession, sorry, procession. So it was victory march, and uh, it would remind them, oh, the army is uh, saying, so it was, a, it was a fragrance of victory. Also, it was, uh, that very smell would remind people that, uh, you know, it was also, remind the enemies that it was, a, it, for them, it was a fragrance of death, right? It was not a fragrance of life. It was a fragrance of death, because they would face imprisonment or, uh, you know, um, executed, so because they were uh, they were being captured by the Roman army. Okay, so he he paints that picture. Okay, so the thing is this that um, he's saying uh, we are to God uh, the fragrance of Christ. Okay, let's let's look at verse fourteen again. Who leads us in triumph in Christ? Okay, so that's the thing. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Okay, so through the believer, through the church, through each individual believer, and collectively as the church, what happens is he diffuses the knowledge, the fragrance of his knowledge. So through us, the you know the gospel is communicated. Through us, through our lives, people see right uh, what it is to follow Christ. Um, through us, the truth is communicated. So he's saying, you know, through us, God diffuses the knowledge or the fragrance of his, uh, of his knowledge, fragrance uh, of his knowledge. So his knowledge is like, it's like fragrance. It's sweet smelling, pleasant smelling, right? Uh, something, that's, something that's very nice to smell. Um, so the knowledge of his presence in every place. Okay, so that's what he does. And verse 15 <laughs> Excuse me. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Okay, why? We we carry the presence of God. We we know the truth, and we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Okay, so the knowledge of Christ is is sweet smelling, is like a fragrance, and when we are to God the fragrance of Christ, which means that wherever He places us. We are the fragrance of, you know, fragrance of Christ, um, the the sweet aroma of Christ in every place. We bring that knowledge, that uh, which is like a uh, uh, sweet fragrance. We bring that knowledge to that place. Okay, so we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So, so in every place there are people who are being saved. They are making their decision for Christ and. There are those who are not making a decision and refusing to make a decision, right? So those, there are those who are being saved, who are making a choice to live for Christ. And there are those who are perishing and those who are refusing to make a decision to receive life, to receive eternal life, right? So to both, we are the fragrance of Christ, okay? Look at verse 16. To the one... We are the aroma of death leading to death. You know, just like how when the Romans army would come in a victorious procession, they will be carrying some prisoners, uh, the other kings and the other army generals, they'll be carrying some prisoners, bringing some prisoners. Now for the prisoners, that aroma, that fragrance of that incense what was burnt, it was, uh, it for them, it is like, it reminds them that there's going to be death. They're going to be facing death. Okay. It says here, to the one we are the aroma of death leading to death. Okay. And to the other, the aroma of life. Because it talks about victory. It talks about you know uh, the the life that is there, if that is possible, uh, is available in Christ. So to the ones who are perishing. It's the aroma of death. Why? Because it talks about 
the fact that one who has not received or one who has not received life but is walking in condemnation right they are being condemned why because they refuse to receive life right so to the one we the believers we are the aroma of death so even though to god we are the fragrance of christ and we are called to be the fragrance diffuse the fragrance of christ uh, of the knowledge of christ in every place but to those who are perishing we are the aroma of death we remind them about you know the, the fact that they have not received life and to the other the aroma of life we are the aroma of life leading to life and uh, who is sufficient for these things you know, second part of that verse who is sufficient for these things for we are not as so so who uh, in a sense you know who who makes this possible obviously the answer is it is god god who uh, who makes these things possible um and in, in fact in the next chapter chapter 3 he talks about the sufficiency that we we are made sufficient as ministers of the new covenant okay so that which means that he has equipped us trained us he has um, you know, his presence is with us he has given us his word so we are you know we are sufficient our sufficiency our ability to um, to do to minister uh, comes from christ right so we see that okay um okay so uh, the let, let, i think let's just look at that word you know su- uh, sufficient when means competent it also means fit, uh, fit sorry competent and fit uh, or competent means you have the ability and you have the fitness to do the job right so who is sufficient for these things of course the lord is the one who makes us competent and fit for the work of ministry Okay. Verse 17, he says, we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity and as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. So he's talking about people, we're talking about others who were living at that time and also even you know, today, that's the reality. So he says that we are not like the others. And what are they doing? They are peddling the word of God. peddling meaning you know there one is uh, of course to sell okay but it also means to adulterate or to corrupt it's like um, when you mix you know let's say you make you have 1 liter of milk but you make it 2 liters by adding water okay and you sell 2 liters okay but whereas the good quality milk is only 1 liter but you have added another one liter of water to make it two liters and then you are selling that right selling for a higher price of course you're getting more money um so one thing is you are selling it right uh, in order so that you are benefited you get money and secondly what you're selling is also uh, it is adulterated it is corrupted because it's not of good quality and it is mixed with water it is watered down diluted okay so that's the that's the picture that we get of peddling so he's saying we are not like so many others who are peddling the word of god now this is what they're doing with the truth they are they are adulterating the truth they are adding to it they are making diluting it uh, in, a, in other w- w- words you know the word of god is not how it is supposed to be preached okay they are selling it uh they are doing it for their own gain not worried about how it will affect the people okay the person who mixes like this you know the the food maybe even in you've heard so many times so many you know like when rice is sold or when some other the thing is sold you know they add so much to it they add something which is which might actually affect the health of the other person right uh they add so much of uh, you know to the rice to the to the wheat um you know the uh, or maybe it fits to the chili powder you know it, some they add something to it so that it's red in color but it's it's not good for the body right it it is it is damaging to the body it's uh, it, uh, it it's not beneficial for the person who's you know who's eating who's consuming it who uses it for the cooking but they still do it so that they can be benefited okay and they are not 
mindful of whether it's benefiting the person okay uh, the other other person they're not mindful of that at all so he's saying you know there are people who are doing this okay they are peddling the word of god with the word of god they are doing the same thing they are adding to it they are diluting it and they are you know maybe for the sake of money they are doing this okay not caring how it will affect the person they're doing it okay but he's saying you know but uh, we are not like that but as of sincerity but as from god we speak in the sight of god in christ jesus in christ okay so so since you know as from god you know this is the word of god so as from god we speak in the sight of god that god is our witness so we come from him you know um, as of uh, as from god which means we are sent out by him and this word is from him we are being sent out from and commissioned by him and we speak in the sight of god okay when god is listening god is watching to what we are communicating and what we are giving uh with the way we are ministering so we speak in the sight of god in christ so we are not peddling the word of god okay so uh, and then he continues on on to chapter 3 okay so we'll just uh, maybe uh, if you want to have if you have any questions before we go on to chapter 3 uh maybe you know you have something to something that you feel that you have learned okay what is that one thing that you Uh, you know you, that you've learned or that you've you feel that was um that touched your heart that you felt was highlighted you know uh, in all these passages we looked at chapter you know, second half of chapter 1 and then also the whole of chapter 2 like what do you feel is highlighted uh, what, what do you think is your learning uh, you could share that right uh, kanan what do you feel you know what from what we learned what do you think stood out to you chapter 1 and chapter 2 you can put it in the chat or you can even you know share okay well kanan is thinking maybe aaron you can share from chapter 1 from chapter 2 what do you feel is uh, you know something that stood out to you something that was highlighted um, which you feel is your you know take away from these two chapters so my yeah, time is open for everyone okay like kiran sid uh, neelan eren whoever you can just share okay so kiran says uh, forgive forgiving others right okay so that you see from uh, chapter 2 right he's uh, instructing and uh, the believers to forgive the person who formerly you know who was put out of fellowship like that's what we see yeah okay uh, we have dominion over the sin okay um, so from from uh, like which verse uh eren you can we you see that we have dominion over the sin any particular verse based on which um you know you're sharing that um um romans is it from book of romans okay yeah yeah i mean we we looked at the roman army and uh, okay it's that he leads us in triumph okay right yes you're right okay and thanks to the lord for everything okay we give thanks yes um so that's how he starts we give thanks to god right um what else what else do you you know uh, god's deliverance okay 
right? Right, so Adam uh, makes us slaves and the Lord Jesus makes us rulers. Yeah, he causes us to be victorious. He causes us to triumph. Yeah. Right. Anything else? Um, Sid? Dave? Neelam? Anything else that you, you know, from these two chapters, what you learned, what you felt was a takeaway? Okay. Okay, from the, uh, you know, the uh, background, from what we see, we also learn about, um, you know, uh, why, uh, like Paul actually is talking a lot about himself, his ministry, uh, the way they lived, uh, etc. So we learn a lot about that also, right? Um, so, uh, you know, even in when he was bringing in correction to the believer, right, what what he went through, what he was going through, uh, it was not as if, uh, you know, he just spoke harshly uh, to them because, you know, they were not living right. It was not like that, right? So he, whatever he said, you know, it was with a lot of, he thought about it, prayed about it, you know that's very clear, and also he uh, he was you know in a way sensitive to what would happen to them when he when he uh, says he says you know I know I made you sorrowful you know he was mind he was he was aware of that it is not like no matter how you feel I'm just going to you know go uh, and do this you know, he he was aware of it he was aware of what they were going through uh, but at the same time he was also he also knew that he had to bring in correction. Okay, so we are delivered even in suffering, God comforts us. Yes, that is something that we saw right there in chapter 1, that uh, in God who comforts us in all our tribulations, right? And as the tri afflictions of Christ, uh, for the sake of the you know gospel, um, uh, increase in us, as the tribulation increase, so also the consolation. Okay, so that's something that we, that we saw. Okay. Okay. Right. What else? Sid, anything from your side? Neelam? Okay. Grace and peace. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's, that's true. Right. So we saw um, the grace of God and the peace from God. So Paul, uh, over and over again, he, um, he greets the people he blesses the people with these two things, right? The grace from God and uh, the peace from God. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, we can we can move on to chapter three. Okay. So in chapter three, it's again a continuation of the last part of chapter two, where he's saying. Verse 17, chapter 2, verse 17, we are not as so many peddling the word of God. You know, we are not adulterating, uh, diluting, and, uh, you know, uh, communicating the word of God so that we get some monetary benefit, that we are, you know, we get money out of it. We're not peddling the word of God, we're not selling it. Right? So um, then, chapter 3, let me. Um, Put that for us. Okay. So chapter three. Okay, let's uh, let's read um, the first few verses. Um, so. Okay. So do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you? or letters of commendation from you. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. Okay. So, um, 
so during that time paul talks about uh, ministry practice where there would be letters of recommendation now uh, it seems to be you know some practice which was there uh, where uh, you know paul himself of course he recommended the ministry of timothy titus uh, apollos right um and we see paul writing to uh, in his epistles writing about timothy you know and if you timothy comes you receive him see that he is there without fear right and also he writes about apollos saying you know i asked apollos to come to you but he was unwilling uh, at this time but he will come there when he is uh, uh, at a convenient time so so he was in fact recommending their ministry affirming their ministry saying that okay these are good people okay so similarly there were letters of recommendation from people of repute or people whom who were esteemed as ministers of god so there were letters of uh, recommendation okay they would say okay he's a nice person he's a credible person uh, god is using him using them in these ways therefore you know you can uh, you can very safely uh, have them in the conversation uh, in in the congregation etc and this was also a safeguard because there were others who were you know like he mentioned there were others who are peddling the word of god and there were some false prophets uh, false teachers right so uh, this was like a safety measure that so they would so paul and the others would uh, you know recommend and say okay these are good people right and uh, so paul is saying you know we, uh, do we need do we need any recommendation letter like that right from you or letters of commendation from you to be given to others right do we do we need and he's saying that you are our epistle in fact you know your transformed life itself is uh, is enough that itself is a letter it's an epistle okay uh, it's like a letter of commendation to your transformed lives and he's you know he says uh, you are our epistle written in our hearts okay so meaning that uh, he carried you know the corinthian believers very close to you know they were close to him in the sense they considered them um, you know as people who were precious and he carried them in their heart um you know obviously you know right he spent about one and a half years with them teaching them um and whatever you know uh, showing them things from the word uh, about the spirit of god and you know getting them and praying for them and they were filled with the spirit they were moving in the gifts so all that has happened in this time with with them right uh, the time that he spent with them so uh, obviously they were close to his heart and so he says you are our epistle written in our hearts known and read by all men okay so um, the way you live your life your transformed life uh, and etc now clearly he says verse 3 you are an epistle of christ okay firstly he said you are our epistle written in our hearts but secondly you are an epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink or you know ink is a like a physical material natural material he's saying you are a epistle of christ which means uh, you know christ letter you, you you your life is actually christ letter uh, and he goes on to explain ministered by us you know we we the we are the ones who serve uh, christ we ministered you know we did uh, what he asked us to do written not with ink so if a letter needs to be written with ink right you either you write with a pen or you know you type out something so it involves some material which uh, uh, which which actually makes out okay you can say here's a you know here are these sentences so you need a material to write on it right so it's written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god okay and also not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh so uh, people would write right writing tablets they would use uh, you know this uh, maybe like something like a writing slate or something to write on um and also you know 
something to write on the material being ink and paper but he's saying by the or scrolls which they were using at those days but by the spirit of the living god so this this writing was done by the holy spirit okay this whole writing was not by by man but by the uh, by the holy spirit so he's talking about something the work of the holy spirit in the life of the corinthian believers in the hearts in their hearts the work of the holy spirit is saying so when you look at you you are a epistle you know we just need to read that epistle how christ has written christ has done some changes in your life christ is uh, you know he's brought in some things in your life he has taken some things out of your life you are an epistle so written not with ink you know the material the work that he did the whatever he did in your life the what he brought into your life what he wrote on your heart not with ink but by the holy spirit okay so you not on tablets of stone but tablets of flesh on your heart he wrote in your spirit he did this work okay um so he's saying we don't need letters of recommendation okay you yourself are an epistle okay so was for and we have such tri- trust through christ towards god and we have such trust um not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from god the again the sufficiency you know he says he make us he made he makes us sufficient in the previous chapter he makes us um um uh, sufficient who is sufficient for these things you know which talks about ability competent or fitness so here a uh, sufficiency that competency that ability to do something comes from god our sufficiency uh, not that we are sufficient of ourselves but our or anything as being from ourselves this is not human method this is not human source um uh, human ability but our sufficiency is from christ that competence and ability comes from christ who also has made us as ministers of the new covenant okay as um, minister meaning one a servant one who serves uh one who does the errands of the master one who listens and carries out the commands instructions of the master so he has made us competent and fit to carry out his uh commands and instructions right and it is of the new covenant okay the the covenant the new covenant that we have because of uh, Christ's death burial and resurrection he has made us ministers of that new covenant okay? not of the letter uh, not of the old not of the law but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life you know um, so he explains that you know when we read in romans chapter 7 we see that uh, uh, when we were in the flesh the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death but now we have been delivered from the law having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit not in the oldness of the letter having died to what we were held by so the letter refers to the law and the prophets the law it was good right it was a righteous standard it told us you know what we could do what we could not do and what was the the standard of holiness that that god expected because he himself was that he he was that standard he is that standard he is holy righteous but the fact is that when we read the law we saw that we were incapable or we could not keep the law so in the in fact that he the law brought us all covered us all as people who had sinned okay it brought awareness of the fact that we are sinful and it brought condemnation because sin condemns right so we are not serving according to the old letter okay but according to the new covenant which brings life spirit of the uh, spirit of the living god who is in us who dwells in us uh he became a law unto ourselves and uh, it brings life he brings life empowering us to obey god obey the you know obey the, obey the standard of god so he empowers us he leads us to obedience right so saying we we were made cover uh, i'm sorry we were made ministers of this 
new covenant. And, and that's the reason he says for the letter kills, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Okay, so it is uh, when we read Romans, when we read Romans 6, Romans 7, and especially Romans 7 verses 5 and 6, we understand why he says the letter kills. Why does the law, you know, bring in, uh, or why is the law the sting of uh, a sin? Sorry, uh, uh, why is the law uh, which is the strength of sin? Um, so this is the reason, right? So it condemns, it covers everyone as people who are sinful and then uh, and then you know uh, and, and it says that uh, we could not be delivered from the law by our own selves we could not be delivered because we are you know we are we have been condemned and it says that you are sinful but so we could not be delivered from that but christ delivered us so the spirit of god brings us to liberty right so that is why we serve in the newness we serve in the new covenant and we are ministers of the new covenant okay right so verse 7 but if the ministry of death so here he is going to contrast between the old covenant and the new okay the old the ministry of the uh, uh, law and the ministry of the spirit right so he's going to be uh, talking about the uh, contrast, talking about the differences between that. Okay? <clears throat> but if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what was passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we have used great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who had a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay? So, um, so here in this passage is talking about uh, the ministry of death, the, the old covenant, the ministry of life, the new covenant, the ministry of the spirit, and uh, he uses certain words to describe that. Okay, so what are some of those words? You know, it says old covenant, new covenant, ministry of death, ministry of the spirit, ministry of condemnation, ministry of righteousness, and uh, you know what is passing away and what remains. Right. So next class, uh, we'll spend more time on this, uh, on the second half of chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. Okay, okay. so we'll stop here. Um, okay, God bless. Have a great weekend. Uh, we'll catch up again um, next week. Uh, I'll also, there will be also be some tests, right, online um, uh, thing that you can uh, and I'll be, and I'll put it, of course, you'll get a prompt, you'll get a reminder. So there will be open book tests um, like before. So there'll be two tests, uh, test one, test two, and there are two more tests coming up towards the end of uh, end of the term, right? So, um, so yeah, so that will also be uh, announced, that will be put up. Okay. Fine, have a great weekend. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Pastor.